Hi everyone, this is Will at Undo Media. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create an animated typewriter text effect like this in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, everyone, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro 2020. I've already got a paper texture image here on the first video track I'll be using as my background for this effect. And I've also dropped in a couple typewriter sound effects I found online here on the audio track. So what we'll be doing here is typing out a word, adding a carriage return, and then typing out a second word. The first thing we'll need, of course, is some text. I'll move the playhead back to the beginning of my sequence. Select the type tool. I could also click T on the keyboard. Click anywhere in the program monitor and type out just my first line of text. We're going to style this text up first before we add any animation. And to do that, I'll go up to the top of the window and click on Graphics, which will open up the Essential Graphics workspace, and then click on Edit, which is where all the tools I'll need to format this text live. The first thing I'm going to do here is check the fill color for my text and make sure it's solid black, which it is. Next, for my font, I'm going with Special Elite. And if you don't have this font, American Typewriter on a Mac, Courier on a PC, either would work. I'll increase the size of this text a little, and you can just enter a value or use the slider here. And the last thing I'll do here is up under Align and Transform, click these two buttons for Vertical and Horizontal Center, which will center my text in the middle of the frame. We're done here. I'll click Editing at the top of the window to return to the editing workspace and drag out that clip to match the one below. What we're going to do now is animate our text with keyframes at each of these spikes in the audio waveform. Each one of these represents a single typewriter click. I'm going to mute that audio track for now. We can do this next step entirely visually. I'll move the playhead back over to the beginning of my scene. And with that text clip still selected, up in the Effect Controls panel, I'll click the arrow beside that layer to open up the controls, and then beside Source Text, click the Stopwatch to set my first keyframe. I'll make sure that layer is highlighted, and then I'll click T on my keyboard for the Type tool, and delete all of the text. The text layer is still there, but now at that keyframe, no text appears. I'll come back down to the timeline, move the playhead forward to where the spike of that first typewriter click begins, and then back in that empty text frame, I'll type my first letter back in again. And you'll see up here in the Effect Controls panel that another keyframe has been added at that position in the timeline. So now, I'll just repeat those steps for each letter, moving forward to the next typewriter click, and adding a character. And yes, I've cheated a little here, I just happen to have the same number of typewriter clicks as I do characters, but I could easily slice this audio clip up and move things around for whatever number of characters I needed. Once I've done the first word, I'll scoot forward to my second set of typewriter clicks, add a line break, and then repeat that same keyframing process for my second word. You could also do this in reverse, keyframing all of your text first, and then dropping in individual typewriter click sound effects at each keyframe. Okay, now that I'm done typing out both words, up here in the Effect Controls panel, you'll see all those keyframes. And I'll zoom out a little bit here and give that a play so you can see what we have so far. So that's already looking pretty good, but there's more we can do with this. What I want to add is at this carriage return sound, I want to bounce everything up like paper feeding through a typewriter. I'm going to leave the playhead where it is right now so I can see both lines of text. I'll come over to the effects panel and I'm going to search for transform, which can be found under video effects, distort, transform. I'll drag that effect over onto my text clip, and up in the Effect Controls panel, under Transform, you'll see Position. I'm going to click the Stopwatch next to it to create a keyframe. And I'm not worried right now that the playhead is not above that carriage return sound effect. I'll set up my keyframes here first, and then move them all together to the right position afterwards. From here, I'm going to move forward six frames using the right arrow on my keyboard. And then, using the vertical position control, slide that text up to where I want my bounce to finish, which will automatically add a new keyframe. So now I have keyframes set for the start and end position of this animation. 
but right now it's a very simple linear movement. So to add some bounce to this, make it look a little more natural, I'm gonna make note of the value I have here for vertical position at my first keyframe, which in my case is 1080. Then I'll move forward two frames using the right arrow on my keyboard. Take that 1080 I had, add 30 to it, and enter that value here. I'll then move forward to my last keyframe, check the value for vertical position there, move the playhead back two frames, subtract 40 from that value, and enter it here. Now, depending on your frame size, you might want to play around with different values here. This is a 4K sequence I'm working with. If it was 1080p, I'd probably add and subtract half those amounts. But the result we're looking for is a slight movement down for the first two frames, a large movement up over the next two, and a small movement back down into the final frame. And we can make this effect look a little more natural by unchecking Use Compositions Shutter Angle and then changing the shutter angle to 180. And if I just step forward frame by frame, you'll see that this has added some motion blur to the effect. Now I have my text bouncing up, but I'd kind of like this background to move with it. If I'm going to move this clip, however, it does have to be larger than the frame. So you can see here I've already scaled my image up a bit. I have a little extra room to play with above and below the frame, so I'll be able to move it up and down without revealing black video at the top or bottom. Now I want this background clip to bounce up exactly the same way as my text, and the easiest way to do that is to select my text clip, come up to the Effect Controls panel, and copy that transform effect. Then select my background clip, go right back to the Effect Controls panel, and paste that effect there. And you can see those keyframes have now been copied over to my background clip. Now at this point, neither of those transform effects are occurring where I want them. Remember, I added those keyframes further along in the timeline where I could see all the text. I want those effects to begin somewhere over here where that carriage return sound is. So I'll just click over here on the timeline to move the playhead to this frame. And then all I have to do is select all of the keyframes in that transform effect and drag them over to where the playhead now is. And then I'll just do the same thing on the other clip. Okay, so now my effects are all set up, but I'm going to add one more finishing touch to this. I'm going to add a vignette up here, just to draw a little more focus to the center of the frame. Now I don't want to apply that vignette to my background image because that clip moves. So I'll come over to my project bin, Select New Item, Adjustment Layer. I'll just click OK here, and then I'll drag that adjustment layer over onto a track above both the other clips, and I'll stretch this out to fit. Then I'll select that clip, and up at the top of the window, click on Color, which will open up the Lumetri Color workspace. Now, there are a whole bunch of color correction and grading tools here, but the only one I need right now is the Vignette tool. And if you don't see these controls over here, you may have to click on the Vignette tab to open it. I'll bring my Vignette amount down, which will darken it. I'll also bring the midpoint down so it affects more of the image. And I'll crank the feather all the way up to 100. And that's all I'm going to do here. It's not a huge difference, but it does give the background a little more dimension. And with that, we're good to go. I'll zoom in here a little and play that for you. Whoa. Don't know what happened there. Somehow that text got changed. Let's try that one more time. Damn it, some sort of premiere bug. All right, last one. Have a good day, everyone.